Hello and welcome guys. Thank you for joining me again for another night of Facebook Live. I also want to take time out to recognize those that catch me on the replay from YouTube and or SoundCloud. I am your host and Tricia Bray Smith, author, educator, and public speaker. Tonight we're continuing on with our Y series and tonight it's all about forgiveness. Tonight we're going to talk about forgiveness. Now, this stems from uh, the book I wrote, Struggling to Forgive. And this um, I released, I believe, um, I want to say it was uh, in June when I released this book, around June 11, 12, something along in that uh, area. I can't remember right off what the date was, but... Uh, so this is what we're talking about tonight. So as you are logging on with me tonight and tuning in, please go ahead and like and share this video. Please remember to like and share the video. Also, as you're logging on, feel free to engage with me tonight by leaving a comment or your questions uh, in the comment section, guys. It's always a pleasure to have you guys engage in conversation with me as we are going through these broadcasts. So, uh, Struggling to Forgive was a book I uh, put together in three days. And initially, this project, project was as a result of a course that I was taking, uh, Writing Your Book in Record Time with Eric Anderson. And it was a part of that uh, course that we took to show us that a book can be written over the course of a fruit a few days. So this is a short read, but whether it's a short read or not, it is a necessary read. And I decided on this topic because I have touched on forgiveness in my first book, Recreating a Better Me. Because forgiveness was a issue that I had to address within myself uh, as I began to uh, realize that there were flaws that could hold me back from where I wanted to go in my career. And one of those areas was on forgiveness. I realized that not being able to forgive or not knowing how to forgive and let go or get through or overcome issues of our past continue to hold us back from getting to the next levels in our lives and careers. So I thought that this would be a good uh, opportunity to do a short read on forgiveness. And guys, I am glad that I did. And um, the book has been selling and, and, and it has done well. But nonetheless, I know that if it gets into the hands of the readers and the readers begin to really look at uh, forgiveness and why it is so necessary and why we struggle with it sometimes in our lives, then I believe that they can overcome and get through and get to the next level in their lives. If you guys would, give me just a second. I wanted to cut down some of the background uh, noise. Um, so I apologize for that. But not already having it taken care of. Nevertheless, um, more and more as I talk to young women or more and more as I uh, surf through the media pages and, and, and get into this new norm 
and adjustments and learning these platforms, more and more I see young women and young men struggling in this area of forgiveness. And what that looks like is that we're good one minute, and then the next minute when something comes to trigger us, we're all discombobulated and off balance and, and, and throwing tantrums and everything else. So, so it looks like something that is unstable, something off balance. This is what unforgiveness does to our lives. It creates then a root of bitterness, anger, resentment. And it begins to build up barriers and walls in our life. And the moment someone begins to penetrate or to get close to that area where we've been burned and violated and betrayed, then the wall goes up and the behaviors begin again to manifest. So this harvest deeply rooted in the inability to forgive. And I think that we, we've been conditioned into, in, in our religious places to, hey, Tammy, how are you, hon? We've been uh, conditioned through religious organizations to say we're okay or to say we're over it or to say because uh, we are children of Christ that we're okay and that we are overcomers and that we are free. But one thing I know is saying a thing and actually living in that thing or becoming that thing is two different things. Because it's easy for the religious leaders to say, say I'm free. And we're all excited and call up in the moment and we say, I'm free. When in reality, all we are doing is imitating a thing. And we put up this face, this, this two-face, this imitation of something that we know that deep inside of us, we're still bound up because we really don't know how to go through the steps of forgiving. Forgiveness is more than just saying that I'm okay. Forgiveness is more than just repeating a cheer or a cliche that someone tells us to say that we're free and we're set free. Because we can't be free when that thing that we say that we're free from continues to draw us back. And what do I mean by draw us back? It draws us back to old nature. It draws us back to familiar things. It draws us back to what we usually do to deal with it. This is why you see so many men and women today our young men and women, our babies, with substance use and abuse, and they think they living it up. Let's see. So many people who are not healed because they have not. That's right. That's right. And, and, and you know, that is, uh, Josh, that is one reason why we do struggle. It's, it's because of how we feel and how we think about ourselves. Because a person who loves themselves will forgive. Because they're going to love themselves enough to want to be free. They're going to love themselves enough to know that they deserve better. And they're going to love themselves to know that you may have hurt me once. But what I will not do is continue to re-traumatize myself by reliving that pain that you inflicted on me. And, 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 and so I look at our babies, our, our, our young men and women going out to discover life. And they're going out with all these old 
issues and these old unhealed wounds and this old resentment. And you know what that does? It makes every decision for them. It wakes up with them. It goes to bed with them. It, it gets high with them. It gets drunk with them. It, it looks in the mirror back at them. And all of this is how they perceive their world. So when I wrote the book, Struggling to Forgive, it wasn't just something to say, uh, uh, patty cake, patty cake, bake us man with you. This is something that there is a real issue. And it may not look like forgiveness. It may look like uh, the inability uh, to forgive. But it may look like something else. It may look like the behaviors that you see. It may be the partying and, and the abuse or, uh, or uh, putting on a face, a, a mask. We look like one thing when we walk out the house, but when we look in the mirror, the ugly reality really stares us in our face. And, and, and I don't, it, it ain't only the young people, guys. L let's get real with it. Now, I, I just use the young, young men and women as an example because we see a lot of their lives streaming through the pages of their uh, media that we surf every day. But uh, it's some of us sitting in the church pews Sunday after Sunday, still dealing with things that we dealt with or, or, or had to uh, deal with coming up as a child. And every Sunday morning when we dress up and put our hair on and we put our face on and we dress up in our finest clothes that little girl or that little boy goes everywhere with us because we're still dragging it along and this is why we struggle so much in life this is why the minute something is said um uh, that uh is straight to the point and direct it hurts our feelings, and we want to ball up in a pity party, and we want to go drown ourselves in a drink when we get home, or pop these pills when we get home. This stuff is real, guys. And it just looks like that. It looks like the reaction we have based upon the real feelings that we really feel about ourselves on the inside. Remember that I said everything that we deal with Every action, every behavior that we show, it, it's something deeper than that. That means that every person that may have violated you, every harsh word that went against what you once believed about yourself, every abuse of power that was targeted at you, it planted seeds. And when we fail to deal with that in a manner that is healthy, then it begins to spring up roots. And some of this stuff is so deep. We're so deeply rooted in our hurts and our trauma and our betrayals that we, we don't even know who we are a lot of times. And so everything we see, we see through that lens of our inability to forgive, and we don't understand it. And, 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 and it's really because when that betrayal and that trauma, when all that occurred, it caused us to look at ourselves different. We can no longer see ourselves for who we are or who we were. We began to take on that label or take on that um, image of what happened. And so we don't love ourselves. We don't love ourselves. We don't we don't think that we're, we're worthy to, to be loved. We can't see ourselves because we can't see ourselves because we're blinded by the pain. We're blinded by that act. We're blinded by that betrayal. We're blinded by that person that we thought uh, was going to be there to protect us. 
it. They feel they are not worthy of it. So keep on making the same. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, when we don't deal with things, uh, Josh, it doesn't go away. When we don't deal with things, it makes decisions for us. I look back at the first 35 years of my life and uh, the first 35 years of my life, those decisions in my life were based on probably the first 10, 15 years of my life. So I look back at the decisions I made. I look back at the choices I made. I look back at the instability. And in reality, it was I did not love myself. I didn't even know what love was. Couldn't even recognize love. So therefore, anything that was good, uh, I certainly didn't want it because I didn't feel like I was worthy of it. But then, after 35, a light bulb goes off. And you begin to think, there's got to be something more to life than this. And I want it. And if it costs me my life, I'm going to get it. And this is the mindset that we have to get to. So it's not time to be condemning of others. It is time that we really get serious about this thing if we're going to do better. And it's time out for just uh, imitating the cliches and repeating the cliches. And, and really dig in to find out what these solutions are for getting on with our life and learning how to forgive. Because in reality, we can't uh, move very far if we don't learn this first. Because it takes forgiveness in order to get to that point to where we recognize who we are and begin to desire better things for ourselves. See, man, you are saying something. You, I mean, I lived it. <laughs> so that's all I could say. I lived it. Trauma, trauma, trauma. Don't you know when we don't forgive people, they may have victimized us one time or two times, but we're the ones that are victim victimizing ourselves over and over again when we take on their labels and we allow the act that they done or the act that they committed to govern our lives we're powerless we are they eat it breathe it dream it wear it yep <laughs> yeah i mean i mean it is what it is it guys and and this is why you know when when we go back and we talk about you know our leaders and we talk about uh the, the people that we connect to, the connections and things like that that we make. This is why this is so important. And this is why when we talked about deliverance, why it was so important. And this is why we have a church full and relig religious organizations and other settings full of hurting people. We're bound up. Why is it that it's so hard to forgive? One reason is because we're not taught how to. We don't, we don't know the steps, really. We, we hear our leaders say all the time, you have to forgive, you have to do this. But when have they ever given you instructions or directions on how to do that? I, I'm waiting. When have you ever got instruction on how to forgive? And so this is where we are. And this is why struggling to forgive is so important. Not only does it ask you important questions and helps you ask the questions of yourself as they relate to you, and brings it to the forefront and gives you a blueprint to look at. But it also takes you through the step of how to overcome, how to get through it. And guys, sometimes our pain is so deeply rooted, it takes us 
one day at a time. But guys, I tell you what, there were so many deep set at roots of bitterness and anger in me that sometimes it took me second by second just to make it. So, so we can't say. And for all the religious people who say that they're free and to say that they know how to forgive and that they forgive and that they're not governed by their past, then why are you popping pills? Why do you need a pill to lay down every night and a pill to get you going every morning? Why is it that you need that drink? Right? Because some of the stuff we do, we've done it so long that we know how to hide it. And we know how to look a certain point. We know how to dress a certain point. We know how to fix it up just right. Because we've had all this time to try to figure it out and to study other people and imitate what they tell us to do. But do you know when I began to love myself and I began to learn how to forgive, I no longer needed a substance to make me feel good. It came natural. I no longer needed somebody to hold me because it felt good to make me feel desirable. All of these issues that we deal with, we can dress it up and make it look like something, but in reality, it's all deeply rooted in the issues that we have not addressed. What do you say? We said at the same time, we <laughs> taught how, yeah, we're taught how not to forgive because that's right. That's right. They, and, and you know what? Leaders cannot teach us anything that they don't know themselves. And when you think about it, when we really take the messages that they're preaching and that they're teaching and that they're uh, telling us, when we really listen, we can hear it. Those of us that has been delivered and those of us that has overcome some things and those of us that knows what unforgiveness look like, we know. We know. But then what do you do when you see your sister on the next pew or your brother on the pew beside you and they're still struggling? What do you do? So when, when I wrote Struggling to Forgive, I didn't want to hide the issues. It, it, it's time now that people need truth. People need transparency. Transparency. People need to know that issues that they deal with, issues that they struggle with really knowing how to overcome, there's reason behind it. And another thing I wanted to address with our inability to forgive is that sometimes it's generational. And, 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 and that's when a lot of us want to say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mama was a good woman. Grandma and them was good people. Yeah, they was, but they had issues too. And when we really look at it, a lot of them were dysfunctional. And a lot of those secrets that they hid is a lot of reason why you had to go through the things that you went through. Because they kept it covered and swept under the rug. So as good as they were, or as good as we like to believe that they were, they were not perfect people. And they struggled with things just like we do today. A lot of issues I had with that little girl getting up with me every day and laying down with me every night and, and trying to bury all that under substance and, and alcohol and pills and whatever else a lot of that was generational so you know what when i began to deal with the issues that i had as it related to unforgiveness 
I had to go down through generation and really look at the whole situation for what it was. And it may have hurt some people to have their secrets exposed, but it set me free. And you know what? I love me enough to set me free. And not only that, I love me enough to set my daughters free. And I love me enough to not let another generation born under this blood to have to deal with the issues that have impacted my family for years. It's time out for all that. I don't know how you're going to heal something or overcome something or get through something that you continue to keep hid. It really doesn't work that way. So struggling to forgive helps you as a person who struggles with forgiveness because you're not the only one. A lot of the people you think that's got it all together, they're just pretending. They're not really set free. They're not really as saved and sanctified as you think that they are. They got bones shaking too. This is why they're unstable in their behaviors. This is why they are unstable in their communications. This is why they're unstable in their lifestyles. Just because they dress up and look the part doesn't make them all right. Just because they're looking at that young man or that young woman and, and talking about them and put them down and talk about everything that they're doing doesn't make them all right. Because one thing I find that the thing that I can point my finger and talk about is the very issue that I have myself. And you know why I can address it and talk about it and put somebody else down in the midst of it? Because that's me. That's how I feel about myself. Because a person with true love and sincerity and a heart for people are not going to treat other people the way that they don't desire to be treated themselves. So if I say I love you, I'm, I, I'm not going to try to put my mouth on the things that you do to put you down and to minimize you. So there is a difference. But if I'm still struggling myself in that area, how I see myself in that area, then I perceive that and I inflict that on you or I inflict that on other people. Because I'm still seeing through the eyes of whatever that is that stands between me and my deliverance. And a lot of times all it is is, is the, the, the seed of unforgiveness. And it's not that we don't desire to be uh, forgiving or not that uh, we don't desire to forgive others it's just that we have not been taught how and one thing I know about us is that we won't read a lot of times another thing I know about us if the religious leader don't give it to us we won't get it and if it wasn't what our family was conditioned to doing we won't get it. So first we have to get out of that cycle. But we have to get in a place to where we realize that we're holding ourselves back so much by allowing these things to uh, make decisions for us every day and to govern our lives that we have to know that there's something more to life than what we've experienced this far. Let's see, we hold tight now. I still, oh, excuse me, I still need to hold something. <laughs> you a nut outright, ain't you? Let's see, voice hidden drama from parents. Yeah, elders. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's what they knew. That's what they knew. They don't have, when, when, when we look at grandma and them back in the traditional days and stuff, when we look at them, they did the best they could with what they have. But you know what? Technology and modern day uh, 
things have done for us, it has left us no excuse. It has left us literally no excuse. So whatever issue we have, there's products and services and whatever else out there to help us overcome. Right? Is that right? Do you have an excuse for anything? I think not. This little device that you're watching me on and that you're listening to me and we're having a conversation back and forth, there's no excuse. Because the same device, regardless of how people use it, holds the key and the answers to the things you seek. So you're not going to get it a lot of times in your religious settings because the leaders of those settings need it for themselves. So they're taking you to the water, but they can't tell you how to drink it. They're taking you to salvation. They can't tell you how to be delivered. And a lot of times it's because that little girl or that little boy that's within them continues to run their lives as well. So this is why I wrote the book, Struggling to Forgive. We're on our Y series. This is why it's so important. Because if we don't get this thing now, we're going to look up a generation from now. And where we see substance and where we see unhealthy behaviors and where we see tantrums running our society and running our world, we're going to have a whole nother generation of just that if we don't get this thing. Because it's not going to go anywhere. We can't keep it hid. We can't con con continue to allow that trauma to make decisions for our lives. We can't continue to hate ourselves and, 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 and to look at ourselves as unworthy or undeserving and think that we're going to do better. So let's take the time to really look at our behaviors and really understand that we act that way for a reason. And when we're okay until something triggers us and sets us back, we're that way for a reason. Could it be that we really haven't learned how to forgive? I am your host, and Tricia Bray Smith. I appreciate you guys joining me tonight for another uh, broadcast on our Y series. I'll meet you right back here tomorrow night, 10 p.m. for another Facebook Live. Good night, everybody.